So a very intense storm, meaning that we had a lot of rainfall in a very short period of time, relatively close to the collection point. I mean, Fountain Creek received, this, this basin received a lot of water. Uh, we had about 1,600 CFS coming through the project, roughly 70,000 gallons per second coming through, hitting the bridge. Initially, the, the first thought is, when you have that intense of a storm, that it's gonna be carrying a lot of debris. That's a main cause of failure when we hit the bridge. It can really do some damage to the, the foundational structure of the bridge, and that's one of the very first concerns that you have for the project side. Last night, the water level was still too high to do a, a full inspection. The foundation of the existing bridge, the new bridge we can always look at today or tomorrow. Uh, always wanna open it up to the traveling public, make sure that we're giving them a route. Uh, to do that accurately and safely, we need to make sure that the water receded enough to get a team underneath there to do the, in the inspection of the foundation. Uh, the engineers did come out, they took a look at it, deemed that the bridge was structurally uh, sound on the foundation side. We also looked at the approach and the exit of the bridge, just to make sure that on both sides of that there wasn't any scour developing along the abutments behind them, uh, and everything turned out to be satisfactory, so we were able to open the road back up today. The creek diversion plan, the failsafe points that were built in were, were in duplicate, and there were two areas that were on the southern side of the diversion meant for in overtopping conditions in a high flow. This event was so intense that it actually knocked out both of them. So the water was able to go through the first checkpoint, and as it diverted, there was still enough flow going down the diversion to knock out the second one. And those two did their job. Uh, they sacrificed the area, the, the construction area, and that's always been a, a very high point of concern for the project. Uh, in, in an event such as this, because it's, it's inevitable, it's not a matter of, of if, but when it does happen, we'll make sure that, we're plan, that we have a plan in place and that we sacrifice what we have that we can control, protect the people, because that's what's important. Initial inspections are showing that we have very little damage. We do have more uh, project features that we do need to have inspected. There is still uh, a pretty heavy flow of water in Fountain Creek, so the areas that have been built uh, directly adjacent to the, to the floodway, uh, the retaining walls and all that. We still have to get in there and wait for the water to recede even further so we can inspect those foundations. Everywhere else, we're really dealing with having to clean up, having to pick up all the debris that's washed down. The project is also uh, extending out, having, having bobcats ready and uh, helping to clean up people, the businesses and residents around here that, that had standing debris in their parking lots. We've been trying to be a good partner really give back to them and help them clean up their debris. The equipment's here, skilled laborers who can do the, the, the work three times as fast, four times as fast, getting it done for them to make sure that everything's ready as soon as possible. Knowing that there's a, another uh, high rain event, the contractor's gonna be mobiling in, mobilizing in some uh, concrete barriers that are roughly about 28 inches high, 30 inches high, and we're gonna be stacking those trying to prevent more of the debris from overtopping. We can't stop the water, but if we can stop the debris and the sediment, that really uh, is a huge benefit to them and their cleanup efforts. We, we now have, have been able to see what the outfall is of a, of a high storm event, and we know where uh, some excess of measures can be taken by the project side to help them out. And that's what we want to do, is make sure that those areas where we can, we can visually see the problems now are taken and addressed. Knowing that there is cleanup that has to be done in this area in Columbia Road before they can continue, uh, whatever that time span takes, whether it's a week to two weeks to really clean it up, that will be a delay to the project, but uh, one that could easily be made up later if, we're, if we find uh, areas to accelerate construction. A lot of the project, that was, project work that was being done can resume uh, as it was originally. We're not seeing so much damage that everything has to stop. There will be a, a very short cleanup effort before they can go back to putting pipe in the ground.